Hey guys, Professor Belkonk, Book University, and we're back for another face rip game, Marvel Super Heroes Advanced Role Playing Game System, and we're going to be talking about hardware in this particular uh, series. Yes, this is going to be a new series, a new arc in this particular series of the face rip game that I'm talking about here. Um, I want to ask you a question really quick, and I want, want you to really think about this, okay? The difference between Marvel and DC. What is one huge, glaring difference? between Marvel Comics and DC Comics, okay? You've got the Superman characters in both. you got Superman himself. you got the Wonder Woman. you got the Shazams. you got the, um, over here, you got like Thor. you got Hyperion. you got Gladiator. you got all these, you know, super strong characters. you got the Batman stealthy type characters and super good fighters over here. you got the, over here, you got the Captain Americas and you got the Wolverines, right? Over here, you got the, the uh, what do you call it? The, the Flyers. you got like Hawkman and things like that. you got over here, you got Angel. Over here, here you got the magical characters like uh, um, what's his name, Doctor Fate, and over here you got Doctor Strange. Why does everybody have a PhD to study magic? I don't get it. Anyway, so you got all these different characters that do all the same things for the most part, right? And you even got robot characters. You got Red Tornado. You got uh, Vision. But what's something that they have in Marvel that they don't really have in DC? You know, not really. Well, the answer is Iron Man. Yeah, Iron Man has sparked so much imagination since his first appearance in uh, Tales of Suspense. I mean, just the, the idea of a guy putting on a suit and going out and kicking some booty, you know? It took forever for them to create Steel. And Steel is not even close to being on the same level as Iron Man. For crying out loud, he's probably on the more on the lines of being like Stingray than anything else. You know what I'm saying? The Guardian practically has more air time. The Guardian armor and the Mandroids have, have more uh, stay time than... than um, steel but for crying out loud the idea is that iron man has sparked so much imagination in people and made them interested in marvel over dc by fathoms just by fathoms so clearly this is going to come up now make no mistake making a high-tech hero is actually part of character creation so if you want a high-tech hero hero that is a part of character creation but you don't have to have a high-tech hero for that case in point Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic from the Fantastic Four, is not considered a high-tech hero. He's an altered human, all right? Um, so you don't, again, you don't have to have a high-tech hero to do this. And when you start off in character creation and you make a power suit for a high-tech hero, th those are creation rules. That's not like what's going to happen here. This is talking about hardware. This is in the middle of the game. You decide that you want to make something even if it's you know whether it's a weapon or a vehicle or it could even be a power suit like what iron man has excuse me but making something in the middle of the game after after character creation is complete this that's what we're going to deal with here all this gadgeteering we're also going to be talking about repairs we're going to be talking about modifications we're going to be talking about all sorts of tinkering methods to make the things that you want to make or do the things that you want to do technologically wise now First off, let's get into the very basic premise that um, when you are the creator of something, when you have actually designed this tech, whether it's at character creation or just in the middle of the game, whatever gadget you have that you made, other people can use it unless you have, you know, like a fingerprint on there or something like that, you know, a retina scan or whatever. If you have a security device on it, that's one thing. But even if you allow them to use the device, you know, you, you set the bio algorithm so that they are a, actually able to use it with their, their brainwave patterns, their neurons. But even then, if they're not taught how to use a thing, or even if they are to some degree, they're still going to have a rough time using it the first time. So case in point, if you sit down, uh, if you're not the creator of an Iron Man suit, but you've seen Tony Stark use it a lot, he's sat around, he's like, okay, listen, this is how I do things here. Put this on. All right. Now this is how you're going to use the repulsors. Hey man, it's nice and easy. But even if, but if you don't have that training you, don't, you didn't get the chance to sit down and, and do much more than like read the manual or even less than that, you're going to have a hard time operating that. And I'm going to refer uh, to the current run right now as I'm recording this video of the uh, the Punisher series. All right. This is immediately following the, uh, the, the Marvel Legacy renumbering. Matthew Rosenberg is writing, took up writing for the Punisher, and he took over the War Machine uh, outfit. So with this... He went on several adventures, several issues of the comic book, not realizing that there's a voice-activated uh, safety lock 
preventing him from using the weapon system. So up until now, he's literally been flying around and punching people in the face with a war machine armor on. So, you know, he there, there, there's, a, there's a lot that, that's involved with using someone else's tech, okay? Uh, as an example, let's say uh, the Tinkerer decides to create a, uh, a gun. A gun is a gun is a gun, right? If you've got the gun talent, if you don't have the gun talent, anybody can, for the most part, operate a gun. But something to the effect of, you know, and that's just, you know, shooting the gun, reloading it, cleaning it, things like that. That's something different. And that's a, that's a gun's talent conversation. That's a video by itself. I'm sure I'll get to that one day in the interim. Um, let's say somebody decides to make a laser gun. Now, you could buy a laser gun, for crying out loud, but why would you make a laser gun? Those things are technically illegal, okay? I'm not talking about the NRA in the current, you know, United States of America situation. I'm talking about in the game world, they're usually illegal. Those are considered a military-grade weapon, and no one else is allowed to use these at all, period. High restrictions. But if you create one, <laughs> what are you going to say? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So there's always ways of doing things, and a lot of that has to do with um, gadgeteering, kit bashing, something to that effect. But let's say you decide to make uh, a, a device that, you know, a weapon that no one's ever seen before, okay? Something that not only doesn't exist in the modern universe, but something that simply does not, ex uh, uh, what do you call it, does not exist in the game world either. I'm going to refer you to the second volume of Star Wars Darth Vader, uh, currently written by Marvel as well, will probably always be written by Marvel after the Disney acquisition, but um, uh, volume two, issue number 11, of Star Wars, Darth Vader, actually sees this young bounty hunter who is out to try and kill Darth Vader, or at least capture him. And the first thing that this young bounty hunter decides to do is to disarm him, to take away his lightsaber. Smart move. How does he do that? He's got a, uh, a, tr a portable tractor device. It's actually a rifle, but instead of shooting lasers or blasters or goss, pew pew, instead it is a, um, it is a rifle that's actually a tractor beam. So using this, boo, you know, trying, you know, unlatch it from behind him and move it over. You know, I had to move his cape over first so he could see, she could see it and then start, you know, bringing it back. Now, this is not something, even somebody with like the Punisher who's used every gun, rifle, weapon imaginable. This is something that he'd probably look at and go, um, yeah, I was not trained on this in basic. So I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. So when you come across someone else's tech you have to make a feet roll to be able to use it. Now, the feet is always at green, and it's always based off of your reason. So a character who's using a device that is not his or her own must make a green feet. You choose to add karma, your choice. You know what I'm saying? But the first time you're going to use it, you have to succeed in a green feet roll in order to be able to use it. Otherwise, things happen. And this is where you got to be a judge, man. Is it a weapon? Does it blow up in the face? Does they Do they completely miss? Whatever. I give you an example of the Black Panther. All right. Issue number 53 of uh, um, the first volume, the original volume of Fantastic Four. This is um, Black Panther T'Challa's origin story. His father was just killed by Claw and, and T'Challa, he's only 10 years old. He goes out and he finds this guy who's carrying this huge device to bring it to Ulysses Claw conks the guy over the head, grabs his giant freaking, turns out it's a, uh, uh, the pre predecessor to the sound conversion device. Right now it's just a sonic emitter. So he grabs this and he goes over and he's going to shoot the thing, but the, but Ulysses Claw screams out, he doesn't know how to use it, he could kill us all. He, they, you know, T'Challa had to make a green feet roll, a uh, reason feet roll, in order to use the device. He did use the device. He was able to destroy his right arm, and that's what wound up leading to Claw, getting the uh, miniaturized sonic converter, a uh, little radar dish on his right hand, left hand if it's the, the movie. But my point remains, this is how, <laughs> this is how that happens. So there are plenty of examples of this in the comic books. Um, so apparently using just one green feet roll is enough, and then you can use the device with no problem. And then uh, if the at the judge's discretion, when there's like a power stunt being rolled with the, with the device, or if there's some other thing that the character wants to do with the device, you know, like uh, let's say it's um it's a stressful situation. You know, what I'm saying okay, the 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 rhinos are, are are you know coming down on you. You've got this one chance to to make this gun work or this device work or to start the car. You know, whatever it is that you're gonna do. So yeah, by all means, man, by all means. Um, cause them to make another green feet roll. Green feet, ro feet rolls are usually pretty easy to do, right? 
but anybody and everybody has to do it. Hey, if you're Dr. Doom and you got your amazing reason plus your multiple talents, you know, in the scientific fields, bro, a green feet is nothing. But if you're somebody like, let's say, Ben Grimm, that that might be a little bit harder. <laughs> so that's that's the deal. Ben Grimm using a, a mech suit that's supposed to replicate his thing powers when he accidentally gets turned back to his human form. That's a that's a green reason feet role for Ben Grimm in order to make the device work. So there you go. Now, make no mistake, I am a little bit different than, uh, I'm, I'm a different sort of judge than the regular judge's handbook. The rules do not control me. I control the rules. So I'm more than happy to sit there and say, depending on the device and depending on the individual, you might have to make, a, you might have to treat each thing that you want to do with this new device that is not of your own creation. You may have to treat each thing as a power stunt. I will not make you spend karma on it, but you will have to make a green feet roll 10 times in order to actually have this as a standard ability. Then you don't, you know, don't worry about stressful situations or anything, just you're good. 10 times you've used this ability, you know how to use this thing. You can make a five, you can make a three, make it whatever you want to make. Just be the judge and make no mistake. A lot of this has to do with consensus with the group. Don't be that tyrannical, heavy-handed judge just as my way or the highway. Because there are people who will pick the highway, and that's no fun for anybody. So talk with your peeps, all right? Um, on top of that, if anybody's going to use alien technology, apparently no matter what the tech level of the aliens, then you will have to make a reason feat roll at remarkable ability. So if you're going to use an Atlantean device or a Cree device, and you clearly did not create this device because you're not Atlantean or Cree, then guess what? You've got to make a remarkable, you've got to make a, a feat roll against remarkable intensity using your reason in order to actually understand and use this device. Exact same rules apply, whether you want to use the book's rules or my rules or your own devised rules. So there's that. Um, finally, let's talk about the most important part, uh, because uh, I'm going to do a future video that's going to talk about all sorts of other aspects of the game, okay, uh, specifically of hardware. But the most important aspect that you have to understand about the game is the um, uh, acquired fee. Oh, for crying out loud, how do, how do I forget the name of this thing? You've got to make the applicable rank. <laughs> I can't believe I just forgot the name. Anyway, so the applicable rank is crucial for anything that you're going to do uh, with creating devices in the game. Applicable rank has to do with whatever it is that you're going to be using. Okay, so an applicable rank uh, for, let's say, a vehicle will be either the control or the speed or the body or the protection. If you're making a weapon, it will be the damage or the range or the material strength. If you're making a power suit, it will be one of the primary abilities or the body armor excuse me, or the material strength. If you're making a robot, it'll be one of the listed abilities or the power. It could also be the material strength. You notice a common theme here? And for all other things, it's the power ranks or the material strength. So material strength is crucial here, okay? Anything that you're building requires building materials, yes? So are you gonna be using, um, you know, adamantium? Or are you gonna be using paper mache? Or something in between? <laughs> Preferably something in between. Regardless. Uh, the idea here is the applicable rank. So the way that this is found is uh, uh, multi multi multiple ways of doing this, uh, multitudinous, <laughs> okay? Um, but you will have to find the applicable rank. Now, if you're, let's just say as an example, you're going to be using a weapon, okay? If you're using a weapon, you can look at either the material strength. What do you want the material strength of this item to be? What do you want the damage to be? What do you want the range to be? So you take all of these three things. If let's say you've got excellent range, um, typical uh, protection, uh, typical material strength, and amazing damage, okay, then the applicable rank is going to be the amazing. Okay, the, the, the highest of those three applicable ranks that you're using is going to be amazing. So right there, the minimum that your device, well, the average that your device is going to be to make will be amazing. So the, the um, what does the applicable rank determine? That will determine your reason feat that you have to see, that you have to make to see if it works. That is the time it will take to work. And that will be the resources feat you'll have to make to see if you can even afford the darn thing. <laughs> so applicable rank is going to be used for every single thing that we talk about in this particular arc of videos. So when we're talking about hardware, you always have to determine the applicable rank. Now we will get into how to actually, you know, like the different modifiers 
for ap- ap- uh, applicable rank, and you will <laughs> you will understand this by the time that I'm finished with this story arc. You will be finished, done and done. All right. So that's all I got for this week. <laughs> Where it's just every week from this point on for the next. I think that I could probably finish this up in two, maybe three videos. I'm thinking three videos, more likely than not, just so it's not too much. All right. But also easier for people to track up later. Anyway, um, here comes the outro. Guys, thanks for showing up. Keep gaming. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.